Hello there folks, welcome to my YouTube channel, a place where I discuss different topics about spirituality, psychology, psychiatry and different similar topics. Uh, such topics can include game design and you know the creation of my game, uh, which for example I'm at a standstill right now, I'm trying to check something and apparently there is a very awkward event interaction that I can't simply find a way around but it's not a problem I can simply ditch that part if I don't need and well usually I answer different questions and I take on uh, several topics that people may find somewhat challenging or difficult to come up with an answer probably because they have not yet become introspective enough and well most likely uh, they might feel you know they need another uh, possible interpretation. Well, again, I prefer underlining the fact that everything that I provide is indeed wisdom and knowledge that I have acquired through my own experiences. Therefore, never rush to take whatever I say for granted. There is a quote that says, don't believe anything that is not yet your experience. Now, the point is, we still have to experience. Now, the video of today will have a topic that I kind of haven't uh, made till now how uh, it's a topic of how to and I've been seeing a lot of these videos on YouTube and I said okay why not throw a video uh, as well so the video for today will take into account the topic of happiness which is technically a concept that most people you know uh, present okay they uh, take into account in a way they uh, manifest or speak about actually as if it would be something of great importance to them but well funnily speaking it's not of any importance to them because if you look back at them they still have their own typical you know uh, somewhat miserable life okay this is something that is typical to our society because for like hundreds of generations if not thousands Okay, no one has been teaching people how to raise their children and society has kind of been, you know, a place of perpetual abuse and, you know, the next generations would just propagate that abuse because, well, that's the only thing they've seen at their parents and, well, they would just propagate it. Now, people block their happiness in numerous ways and one of the strongest ways is resistance. Anytime people manifest resistance to literally everything and one of the most common resistances is that to change People simply feel a fear towards change That's one of the blocks towards happiness because people don't understand or simply don't want to accept the fact that Change is the only constant in this universe. There is no such there is nothing else than change because change is constant but unfortunately social programming has made us um, you know react and become complacent especially through the idea of uh, consumerism because consumerism as a fundamental aspect has the purpose of keeping uh, people uh, you know somewhat bound into illusions uh, granting people so much pseudo uh, freedom actually gives people the impression that uh, they actually would have some kind of freedom or the such but it's actually not the case okay consumerism works on the fundamentals of something around this okay just be dumb don't worry about anything we will provide you uh, whatever you want but in order to get that you have to work your ass for your rest of the life right and you also have to keep your mouth shut and don't say anything you know just obey authority and well whenever there's a problem you call to us okay and that's kind of how consumerism works and uh, every time and everywhere you know like the market will always say that irrespective of where you work you'll always be worth the minimum wage irrespective of how much you work irrespective of where you work the marketplace will always say that hey you know what um uh, your your value is worth only the minimum wage everywhere you work so what's the point of doing that oh yes because um 
there are so many temptations in this world and you can only get them through money which is a way of controlling people by keeping them at a low vibration of want and need and manifesting lack is something that also opens you to spiritual parasites and well other dimensional types of parasites especially mental parasites that usually uh, present themselves around the temples of the heads and there are those types that you know they just uh, dig shitty thoughts into your mind and you know you always have that frustrating sensation that you can't stop your mind and that kind of blocks your happiness okay one thing that people don't understand is what you feed yourself with is actually information and it really doesn't matter how you feed yourself okay what with it's still information okay uh, and we feed ourselves through technically all aspects of our body okay including our skin because you can go out in nature and you can sit in the sun and that's actually kind of feeding yourself okay the sun rays allow the skin to create uh, vitamin D and with vitamin D that actually helps boost your uh, immunity system and it actually gives you some more vigor okay and it is a natural way of you know becoming healthier keeping yourselves healthier and also having a greater passion towards life and having naturally more energy being more durable to stress okay planting your feet on the soil okay on natural soil okay in the forest or in the back of your house that places you in contact okay your skin is in contact with the um, negative ions that the earth simply emits and these negative ions once they get into your body they hunt okay they specifically target positive ions in your body which are you know cancer generators or well they don't generate necessarily cancer but you see everything is food technically because everything that you feed your body with becomes a part of yourself and the body simply regenerates and all the cells that are produced in your body are simply produced through what you feed your body with okay sunlight is a type of feed okay because you feed it through your skin right the electromagnetic field of the earth is also another type of feeding okay it also feeds your auric field which the auric field is also a physical representation of our body again much uh, much more subtle okay than the physical body but that is also another type of feeding when you stay around people okay your auras overlap and that's another type of feeding your body right and depending on what people you surround yourself with what thoughts they emit the negativity of the environment you are in again these are different possible happiness blockers okay because you simply can't manifest happiness when you surround yourself with a lot of negativity right so the point about this is there are so many things that so many ways that people can actually bolster their happiness right but many people actually enjoy the prison of the mind because well it's actually the prison of the mind right um, many people have the impression that if they just go to work get good grades at school and you know do whatever uh, their parents have been doing right uh, that's actually freedom and they unfortunately most people will actually fight for that but well the funny question comes just look if you look at those people right if you look them in the eyes the question that comes is okay how happy do you think those people are right they become so miserable that they are simply willing or okay they are actually willing many of them to consciously degrade their children as well if they have lived a life of lies right in which they accepted those lies but well yes to a certain point they were also fooled and taken advantage of because their awareness was much low or much lower but again it is a spiritual um, lesson that they uh, their facets of consciousness had to learn well the point about this is they actually become enraged enough and narcissistic enough to also teach their children to do the same thing they have done right it's an aspect of uh, sociopathy in a way if i have suffered you are also bound to suffer you also must suffer but this is not necessarily an entirely uh, sociopathic okay you're not a sociopath necessarily if you think that okay 
it's one of the possible traits okay it's a representative of trauma because sociopathy and narcissism are actually nothing else than trauma and i also have a quote that says in most of the situations when you talk to people you technically are speaking to their past okay you're speaking to their traumas that they haven't made peace with okay they're actually you're actually speaking to their traumas that uh you know they haven't made peace with because if, if people don't make peace with their traumas okay they will always manifest karmically okay because karma means um memory in a way and it's actually as some people would say uh, when your past becomes your future in a way because living in all of your past life traumas you are technically making your future super predictable because when you live based on your traumas right you will live a life of misfortune right and a life of suffering because you have suffered in the past already but for some reason you are still tormenting yourself while also probably expecting happiness or some kind of you know hero from out of nowhere to come and actually change your life but the problem is you must learn how to change your life because let's say there is someone okay that will come and change you know that person's life okay they will solve all the problems of that person right but their mentality is still of pain embracing right is still embracing the pain right because if you solve someone's problems you haven't solved the problem okay because that that way after you have solved that person's problems right you have two situations one they will cause more problems because their mentality is still stuck in that so that's the only way that's the only thing they will do or in the worst case scenario they will actually specifically do more troubles okay and that's a way they will invite you in their life to keep solving their problems while they will keep creating more problems so that you stay close to them right their self esteem and their self trust is so low they simply can't you know ask you to you know do more than that they will just treat you as a slave who has you know to solve all their, all their problems and the more you do that the more technically the more you invite them to do that okay so that's actually a problem and it's another way that you know people are blocking their happiness okay people pleasing is another way that people can block their happiness okay people pleasers only have one possible outcome okay people pleasers usually you know are just like slaves waiting for you know anyone to simply um you know please as it is said okay they just wish to uh, be of service to others to a certain extent it's not necessarily bad because yes this society teaches all of us to be somewhat people pleasers and well to a certain extent like a very very small extent we may actually end up um uh, you know acting in such a way even you know like later on even if we uh make peace with our pasts like most people actually go through uh more or less go through a past of people pleasing right i myself also went through and well not much okay there weren't too many people but there also came a question like okay like i do whatever i can to make other people's lives better but the question came okay when smiter okay like when will actually people try to solve some of my problems right and when it theoretically and practically would have been my turn then guess what there was no one around and okay like you know and it takes a while it takes a while until you draw the line and say okay i actually need greater boundaries and again people pleasing is another way that people block their happiness and people pleasers usually uh end up more or less narcissistic and or or sociopathic uh because well people pleasing is also an aspect of trauma okay with people pleasing you have people who do literally anything to you know try to make other people's uh, lives better but they do it for attention okay so it's uh, it's in return for something it's not necessarily value provision they might actually be nice guys but they can actually become problem you know like trouble makers because you know when they when people crave attention okay that's usually when a lot of problems 
societal problems uh, that's where most of societal problems actually stem from okay so that's in a way quite a little problem I could say actually it can escalate quite greatly but fine so the point about this is you know uh, problems like this can be a lot okay now people pleasers usually uh, tend to become uh, slavers in time because as they will sacrifice so much energy for the sake of their own uh, you know attention grabbing right because many of them just do this so that they get at least a bit of attention and then they become more and more demanding to a certain way they also uh, might actually tend towards the idea of uh, the Munhausen syndrome right a syndrome in which they lie themselves that they are taking care of other people but they kind of end up enforcing their help on other people right and this is something that well science says it affects both genders and in a somewhat different way right and well it can actually become a very dangerous syndrome because it can at times lead to the death of that person okay in which the person suffering from this kind of ends up you know feeling that they are some kind of medic or healer uh, or uh, you know some kind of god that they are taking care of a certain person but it can actually happen that they will impose their help on those persons and usually these people seek helpless persons and well they can actually lead to their death in some situations um, another ending of these uh, people pleasers and usually the typical one is that they become slavers okay sacrificing so much of their time and energy for the so-called betterment of others but again this is a belief and a belief is accepting something without the necessity for proof um, these people kind of get sick sooner or later okay not necessarily sick of doing this because it's the only thing that most likely they know and most likely the only thing they will do so they will simply get sick okay and one and once they get sick you know like literally sick probably i'm not too able to move or something like that there will actually be other people pleasers around them who will do them several things and finally they will see what it's like to be people pleased right and suddenly they will choose to be sick right and fake it and you know do like literally everything so that other people pleasers now please them right and they become in a way slavers once you try to pull that away from them they will start using more and more narcissistic strategies like kind of what my grandmother seems to be doing using emotions against you you know like they're claiming that uh, you know possible claims could be something like but I've taken so much care of you you know and now you're uh, ditching me and you know all sorts of emotional traumas and usually people pleasers are nothing else than trauma okay and trauma is another way of blocking your own happiness okay because the moment you manifest traumas and you start doing theater work as I call it well you're nothing else than a buffoon okay but technically you're worse than a buffoon because you see the buffoon knows that their purpose is to make other people laugh right just like I know that's my purpose my purpose is to summon this ancient pure medicine of nature okay the strongest medicine of nature is laughter and well it's my purpose to summon it at any moment I find uh, necessary okay and well correctly usable okay so that I heighten the spirits and the point about this is well the buffoon knows that their purpose is to make other people laugh right while inventing different things right drama people also invent a lot of things but usually they feel very bad when people make fun of them right so there was also a story about you know uh, a master and a disciple right and uh, uh, the disciple is said something about i don't remember the story exactly and the uh, you know the people laugh and he gets angry and the master also bursts into laugh bursts into laughter or something like that and he tells the disciple you know like the disciple thinks about that thinks about that and then goes to the master is like uh, how can you actually explain this situation and the master tells them well you're worse than a buffoon 
he gets a bit angry right the uh uh the disciple right because not only does the master call them worse than a buffoon but he also laughs at them right and asks how come you call me like that and the master simply says well you see you're actually worse than a buffoon because the buffoon knows its purpose their purpose is to make other people laugh okay you make other people laugh but you're getting angry about that right and that's not necessarily good because you're actually turning things much worse than they are okay now the strongest thing that i believe is the strongest blocker of happiness and literally anything else is meaning pay attention to how much meaning you give to literally everything because the more meaning you give the more you commit to self destruction okay because trauma is nothing else than meaning okay you have gone through certain events and you kind of have a mentality most likely you have taken it from your parents that you are entitled to never suffer okay life in a way is suffering okay to a certain extent life is suffering because if you the more you stray away from your um, authenticity then suffering will be your best friend and not because i say so it's because that's how the universe works just take a look around you and see and see everyone okay you will see a lot of people that they say oh you know like uh, do my master class you know follow my course uh, you know learn about authenticity but just look in their eyes okay Do you see any true happiness in there? Well, if you do, probably they are somewhat authentic or well, they tend a lot towards that maybe, but there are a lot of people who may even claim they have, you know, the uh story, you know, the correct stories for success, right? But just look into their eyes. If you see shit in their eyes, those people are far away from authenticity. Look at your par- look your parents in the eyes, okay? At least for once. Okay? Look your friends in the eyes, okay? Do you see someone who will actually commit to change or do you see someone who's actually, you know, gonna be the same 30 years later, right? Because this is a very very tough question. Most people think that, hey, you know, like uh, I have a lot of friends, but what kind of friends? Okay? Because everything is turned more and more shallow nowadays just because Facebook or Discord or whatever platform says, "Hey, you know what? Uh, you have X 100 friends." it doesn't really it doesn't even matter now nowadays you can actually make through internet yes you can actually make a lot of friends without seeing them right in real life uh, it's not bad if you actually get to see them you know through the camera and you know at least hear them right and speak to them so that you technically socialize right you can have very good friends through the internet yes and you know you can have what i call hobby friends right like friends that you share hobbies with or you know uh some activities like even gaming or whatever okay so you can actually have very good friends through the internet but you see very good friends are very rare to find usually but also very good friends are exactly like very good customers okay many people believe that they need to please hundreds of customers if not thousands okay because they are still stuck in the consumerist mindset while the key to happiness is to only find yourself a few good customers okay because you don't need to have customers you need to have a family right you need to have nurturing relationships with several customers and if you know how to nurture those relationships right you can simply help them it's like helping a few people instead of being a people pleaser which again leads to a previous point right people pleasing and well it's nothing else than a shield against happiness right just like resisting change and well i also mentioned something when i was speaking about people pleasers and well i think i forgot what i said but that's also another point okay the first thing that uh, people pleasers can end up as okay yes they are some kind of exploiters so the people you surround yourself with that's also mental and psychological feeding because i was also speaking about what you feed yourself with okay that is mental and psychological feeding because through your empathy also emotional feeding because through your empathy you're going to uh actually not through your empathy but more like through something called the pendulum effect okay or how things impact you based on your own vibration people will call it the law of vib- law of attraction or something like that i heard it once 
mentioned as the pendulum effect and it is how things uh, influence you and how you actually allow things to influence you even things present there without their manifestors right like let's say it like this every time you manifest emotions they are like an explosion right a burst that simply impregnates literally everything around you on a certain range okay and you know people are angry people as i've been saying till now uh, when you speak to most people usually you speak to their traumas okay and investing so much into that basically everywhere they go they just impregnate everything with their traumas so naturally speaking if you have a very low vibration and you go into a bus station even if there's no one in there the traumas of all people that you know they have been thinking of some of them may still be there because you know whatever you manifest emotionally you just create constant bursts of energy okay that simply impregnate everything now again these things dissipate because everything dissipates right but come again you may still actually um uh, take a bit of that negativity right that's why through the pendulum effect you can actually end up having so many awkward uh thoughts in your mind that most likely you wouldn't naturally think of and the pendulum effect also triggers from the internet okay when you connect yourself to a post right that post is related to a certain person right and that person creates a pendulum effect right think of through the pendulum effect think of everything as being kind of an emotional server okay because everything the more attention it draws okay the more ideas it draws because technically when you draw attention you draw in ideas right and those ideas every time you think of someone or of something you're technically sending those thoughts around that person right and any other person who thinks of that person also does that and if you have similar vibration you can actually pick on different aspects of that right so think about twitch streamers or i don't know some uh you know uh, high caliber streamers or something like that right if you have a high vibration you'll usually tend to connect to the higher vibrational aspect of them right and you will feel sympathy you will feel probably success you will feel motivated by those people if you have a lower vibration usually you will see everything as bad and usually you will tend to connect and uh, naturally attract uh, the you know the trolls and the hate directed towards that person right because everything is vibration and their shadow side namely the parts they haven't made peace with yet well that's what they will attract right they will keep attracting different uh situations right they will keep attracting different exploiters trolls feeders right in video games and well any other thing now regarding these okay uh there are many other things okay that can influence your own happiness okay like uh, for example your uh mental feeding right like what you feed your mind with do you keep feeding your mind with pornography music that degrades literally anything the food that you eat is physically nourishing your body and it's everything that you eat it's like technically you're plugging it into yourself right you're putting a memory stick and well you're downloading its information and that food that you eat well does nothing else than become you that food actually becomes you and the cells that your body keeps reproducing those cells will uh, their quality will depend on how great the food that you gave your body was right just like a car or like literally anything okay a, a device that requires a certain type of fuel if you give it a weaker fuel right a lower quality fuel it's not going to work as intended right it's not it's not going to work at full capacity right like with machines okay when you oil them right you they need at least a certain amount of quality of oil right but if you give a lesser quality then again they might break faster it's the same thing with your body every now and then each and every cell has a lifespan and every now and then our body simply regenerates those cells and those cells when they give birth to newer cells okay they give birth to other cells based on the quality of your ingredients right what you put into your body is technically how your cells will be right the health of the body dictates the health of your cells right if you sun gaze right if you go into nature and sun gaze if you eat 
I'm now I'm not you know like uh, against meat okay feel free to eat meat if you want but come again don't forget that meat also has a lot of suffering from animals okay I still find myself eating meat but very rarely okay and not because I you know I haven't yet reached that level when I feel you know like uh, totally away from meat okay like I kind of ever since I was young I didn't like meat but you know very rarely I eat from time to time okay usually I tend a bit more towards uh, you know the vegan part right I'm not fully vegan but I could say 60 70 80 percent uh, so the point is with vegan foods you have to pay much greater attention because a lot of the uh, plant-based substances okay nutrients they usually are much more powerful and more potent okay than meat uh, protein for example so you know eating vegan is not something just you know like just eating you know brainlessly eating leafy greens okay because they can actually mess with your body much more than meat okay it all depends on a diet uh, it all depends on finding the right times for yourself to eat okay another very important thing to take into account is your sleep okay because how you eat how much you sun gaze how much you move into nature also affects how uh, healthy your body is how uh, vibrant your body is and through this how vibrant your body is well that's gonna be a very great issue because the more you sun gaze theoretically and practically the better you will sleep and the more connected you are to nature the better you will sleep the less you eat in a way and to a certain extent you're also gonna require less sleep because most people sleep a lot because they indulge into eating a lot okay they overindulge many people eat three times a day and they simply forget one ancient thing okay ever since our and you know like our ancestors have been knowing this thing or at least they were at least half conscious okay while they were hunting for prey that your brain functions at the best potential when you're hungry okay in order for the brain and for your mind to work at full capacity you actually need to be hungry okay you actually need to have an empty stomach because while your stomach is empty your brain starts working at full capacity because it's starting to process through all possibilities in which you can find food and you can actually learn how to bend your mind in such a way to use it for your better good you can use this to your advantage so that when you are hungry you can actually do those heavyweight duties okay because that's technically when your mind will function at the greatest uh, potential you know eastern cultures and yogic sciences state that there should be around 15 16 hours in between meals and i would correlate my meals with something that is called the chronotype okay the chronotype is a powerful concept that says um, each person has certain uh, has a certain circadian rhythm okay they have you know life is all about a cycle okay you can view my previous videos and i present that on detail somewhat and you know life is a cycle okay when you wake up you technically are you technically are reborn okay and when you go to sleep and you fall asleep you technically die okay and you wake up to other lives that you experience and well when you wake up you don't remember much of that because the body can have say even several hundred parallel life experiences okay and when you go to bed you're actually continuing another life right you're waking up in let's say a day in another life right because each day is technically a cycle okay you wake up technically you're born okay and then you manifest whatever you do in that day and when you go to sleep you technically die because when you rest that's technically a type of death okay it's not the fully fledged death that people seem to be you know like it seems to be the only kind of death that people know and there are multiple types of death okay like when your awareness is like painfully low that is another type of death because technically if you live your life subconsciously that's another type of death because life is all about experience life is all about doing things consciously that's the power of humans okay now animals on the contrary they are somewhat conscious as well right but even if they are conscious okay to them it is much more important to follow their instincts okay because that's what technically they are doing 
they are always constantly following their instincts okay compared to the animals right the human can do uh, these same things okay much more consciously okay the cat or the dog or you know like any animal may not necessarily be aware of their breathing okay it's just something that's done subconsciously okay they just need to focus on where to find their food where to find the mate right and they also have one thing that humans can do but apparently nowadays it seems like a curse the idea of simply living the moment okay and when it comes to this you know you have the most unique animal called the cow okay the reason why in yogic sciences and you know in india for example the cow is sacred is because the cow is actually the only animal that can actually stand still it's the only animal that can like 100 percent of its time the cow simply um, lives life to the fullest okay it simply experiences life okay because anything that can actually stay still for so long time that's definitely beyond beyond physical okay because nowadays everything is a manifestation of impulse and you can see that best in cats right cats usually have this habit yes of staying there right but there's always an impulse right they're always looking for like even if they stand still in a certain place for even 20 hours there's always an impulse in them they always have to be they're always looking for something right and they can perceive in multiple dimensions yes so they're always looking for some kind of parasite to combat with their big eyes right because their eyes are gates that you know invite negativity within right they feed upon negativity now it doesn't mean that cats are negative because they feed on negative energy cats are embodiments of alchemy okay they are alchemists most of them are natural alchemists because well naturally speaking they kind of are now we can't necessarily generalize but you know like generally speaking okay cats are natural alchemists okay usually you will see a lot of cats around the negative places because that's where they feed okay they also feed dimensionally because they have parasites that they feed with okay they feed upon right they uh, they really love exterminating you know negative thought forms and um, things like that that is why they have always been seen as you know protectors and guardians right that is why they were uh, revered to the level of gods right in egypt now the cow for example is the only animal that if you place the cow somewhere it's just gonna graze okay it's just gonna graze and if you look at it you know if you look the cow in the eyes it's like there is nothing there okay it's just experiencing life to the fullest okay and the only people that can actually do that is usually you know like the fully fledged you know the true gurus okay not those who simply proclaim themselves as such right but a true guru is the one who simply seeks inside of them right and understands the system the body system the uh, solar system right the uh, well let's say even the cosmic system but that requires a very great level of awareness right and um, they just go within and find all the answers that they need right and that's why so many of the yogis for example in india right like christianity for example has a lot of saints you know india has a lot of yogis okay that are well known for whatever they have done right some of them probably have done failures in life but they're still revered because compared to most other people they kept trying and also you know despite drama you know despite uh, wars or despite a lot of negativity they simply were unscathed right they were untouched by life right that's another way right when you become capable of not being touched by drama right when you no longer take into account what people say that's how you actually break another shield that's protecting you from happiness right when you clean the messes that you have in your life right like literally every kind of mess right from physical mess to the mess in your mind to the mess in your soul right although i kind of don't believe in the idea of a soul but okay to literally everything similar to that okay then you're actually unlocking more and more okay from the gate uh, that allows you access to your um, to your abundance okay 
I'm gonna tell you one quote that my mentor told me, okay? And this quote is something that goes like, each mess that you have in your life is a key from the gate, okay, that keeps you away from your abundance, okay? Each mess that you have in your life is a key that, well, when you use it, okay, so when you ditch that mess, okay, you open another lock from the door that keeps you away from your abundance, okay? Everyone is free, okay? All the people are born free, okay? You're always free from the beginning. It's all the drama and, you know, things that, that you accept from other people, right? That make you feel that you're not worthy, you're not free or whatever, right? Uh, now, I can actually go on with this video for like, I don't know, probably at least as much as I've been going because I don't have an idea how much I've been speaking, but okay. And all I can say is that, well, hopefully I sparked some curiosity and hopefully I sparked some, uh, you know, ideas. Other things that people could uh, learn to increase their, you know, happiness could be self-love and most importantly gratitude okay probably i will speak about this in other videos because i really don't want to make two hour long videos okay all this being said hopefully you like the type of content that i'm creating feel free to like and subscribe feel free to share with everyone so that we help raise the awareness of people and feel free to guide people towards my account if you feel you know impressed but by what i create Feel free to view the videos about my playing Heroes of the Storm or the videos about my game and well feel free to provide me with you know constructive feedback. If you are working towards a video game and you want some help you know with constructive feedback and criticism regarding that feel free to throw me a link and I can actually you know do you something like that. I have actually several videos uh, in which I provided a friend of mine a lot of value all right on her uh, demo so all this being said you are loved and appreciated keep doing the great work that you are doing remember that whatever you are doing is the best you can at the right pace for you you are loved and appreciated take care of yourselves and your loved ones very on board signing out